All right, you all, we will now move directly until, uh, into our 1020 public hearing, and I'm going to call to order now our 1020 public hearing. This is to amend Chapter 20 of the 2019 Detroit City Code Health by amending, amending Article 6, Medical Marijuana Facilities and Adult Use Mar uh, Marijuana Establishments, Division 3, Licensing, Section 20-6-39, Inspections, Investigations, and Review of Materials Submitted. Uh, we can have our corporation counsel is here. If you want to join us at the table. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So if you can just uh, state your name and title, and then you can begin to give us an overview of what's before us today. Uh, my name is Conrad Mallett, Corporation Counsel for the City of Detroit. So here's where we are, uh, Madam President, members of the legislative body. Um, our charter requires that for any initiative or referendum, 3% of the qualified voters have to then sign the petition that is examined and approved by the city clerk's office and the Department of Elections. So really quick, Deputy Mayor, we are talking about the public hearing to amend Chapter 20 of the 2019 Detroit City Code, Health, uh, me Medical Marijuana Facilities and Adult Use uh, Marijuana Establishments. This is a public hearing. Oh, okay. So... Madam President, so the, the, then from my team then, I'm thinking that the marijuana department, Anthony Zander and Kim James uh, are, are present. I was going to speak to the other issue that I was certainly going to come up at a later time by the president, uh, President Pro Tem. Okay. President Pro Tem. Yep. Thank you, Madam President. So, uh, and thank the uh, Corporation Council for being here uh, to provide additional uh, color to what we are uh, being presented today. So what... This public hearing is uh, set for uh, the law department had some uh, concerns after speaking with the Department of Administrative Hearings uh, regarding some of the uh, items within the uh, licensing ordinance that we have in, uh, that we've approved and uh, provided a short list of amendments to the uh, ordinance. Uh, in short, the amendments uh, clarify that the city shall deny a license to a business delinquent in funds owed to the city. Uh, that have operated illegally and was subject to an involuntary uh, closure noticed by the Department of Administrative Hearings or BC uh, or misrepresents or falsifies information uh, on the business application for a new license. So that's the overall uh, overarching uh, aspects of these amendments. But I will uh, turn the floor over to the law department who provide additional information as to uh, specifics. So, Madam President, you've got Brian Cole from my office and the new director of the marijuana department, uh, former member of my team, Kim James. Yeah, and, and, Madam President, if I may, uh, I, I'm glad that the Corporation Council is here because we do want to talk just briefly about the uh, legal opinion that has been uh, drafted by the law department mm -hmm. concerning um, uh, ballot initiative signatures. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Ms. James? Sure. Good morning. How is everyone this morning? Um, thank you for having me, Madam President and Council. Um, all I want to, I just want to express that this is um, an important amendment. We realized basically what happened was BC uh, denied a license in the medical marijuana space for, you know, and those are competitive because they're limited in number. And so as is allowed in the ordinance, the applicant appealed that to the Department of Appeals and Hearings. And during the hearing, the hearing officer pointed out that there, there was no criteria for denying a license in the ordinance. And that had never come up before because no, the number of licenses was not limited in any other situation. And so that we never had um, uh, given a final denial because you kind of always give the applicant more time to correct their application when the license numbers are unlimited. And so uh, we included in this in the particular case that we're talking about, the applicant had been operating illegally, um, had been closed down by the police after an investigation, surveillance. There were many complaints about this location from um, city council itself, from the mayor's office. 
And so, uh, you know, it's really important that the city is able to justify and, con you know, not give this, not be forced to give this applicant a license. And so uh, the criteria that we included in this uh, amendment is just to, you know, make sure if there has been any illegal operation in the past that the city has the ability uh, to deny that licensed applicant. And then we included some other um you know, things as well, like fraud or misrepresentation or owing money to the city. And uh, I will defer to the law department, Brian Coe, if he has any other comments. Yes, uh, yes. thank you, uh, Kim. Through the president, uh, I just want to point out one more thing. Uh, the issue was raised at council previously, whether this uh, amendment would disqualify persons who had a prior uh, conviction for you know, illegal possession or uh, some other drug offense, and um, it would not. The what is an illegal operation, uh, as defined in this ordinance, is failure to uh, obtain a license when one is required. So it it is you know illegal operation of a business, not um, possession of a substance or possession with intent to distribute. So uh, we are not disqualifying persons who were harmed by the war on drugs. Um, we are in, instead trying to close a loophole where someone uh, who legally operated a business was able to um, essentially flaunt the law uh, that requires uh, a license and in the future will limit the number of licenses available uh, in the city. All right, thank you, Mr. Cole. Any That's it. That's it, Proton? Yeah, I don't know if we had anything else to add, but that's it. Corporation Council? No, ma'am. Nothing else to add? Mm -hmm. All right. Colleagues, do you have any questions or comments related to the public hearing before us? All right. If there is nothing additional from my colleagues to the general public, uh, those who are joining us virtually, we are going to lower everyone's hands um, for this particular hearing. If you are here for the medical marijuana public hearing for 1020, you can now raise your hand and we will still have general public comment after. So this is only for the 1020 public hearing regarding the adult use mar uh, marijuana establishments. Please raise your hand at this time. Do we have anyone here joining us today for our 1020 public hearing? I see uh, Malik Shelton. Yes, you can join us and everyone will have one minute for public comment. Good morning, council and residents and taxpayers of this great city. My concern is most of the lucrative lucrative businesses in the city of, city of Detroit, gas stations, supermarkets, auto repair shops, tire stations, tire shops, jewelry stores, and so forth and so on, um, they're owned by outsiders who don't live in the city. And this has been going on for decades. The council has either been unable or unwilling to make any traction against this trend. So now we're talking about marijuana laws, excuse me, marijuana licenses, recreational marijuana licenses for Detroiters. I think it's 50% or 51%. Already there's a lawsuit that's slapped saying that this is, oh, this is discriminatory. So my concern is in view of the fact that it seems that Detroiters can't get any large and lucrative businesses, what makes the council think that we're going to be able to get a majority or a large chunk of the marijuana business. Thank you so much, Mr. Shelton. All right. uh, Mr. Cunningham. Honorable body, uh, everybody at home. Hello. Um, the original uh, bill or, or, or by uh, Councilman Tate was excellent. It was aggressive. And it was trying to get black people in the business, basically. Um, the second version is good, too. Um, 
Um, but but that was the original intent. They can't say black people, but they, you know, <laughs> they had to say it in that terms, in the terms of, what was the term? Was it legacy Detroiters? That, that's what you have to do in politics, um, because everything that gets taken over by other entities, other races. Every every business we ever had has just been taken over by everyone else. Um, period. And so I just appreciate. I don't always agree with Council Member Tate, but. Uh, he knows I, I, I pray for him, and, and, and he's always cordial to me, and I appreciate him, and I just hope that black folks can get in this business. Thank you so um, much, Mr. Cunningham. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you in person. All right, we will now go to our virtual public comment. How many callers do we have for this 1020 public hearing? Uh, good morning, Madam President. It looks like we have Seven hands raised for this public, uh, I'm sorry, for this public hearing. All right, you can um, proceed. The first one is Ruth Johnson. Good morning, Ruth Johnson, Community Development Advocates of Detroit. I wanted to comment about illegal operations. My first concern is it seems like most of the investigation and enforcement is on the backs of Detroiters who are fighting to protect their community. Uh, I would be interested in knowing what are the enforcement strategies that are being used. As far as illegal operations, despite not thinking it's a primarily an individual situation, what uh, resources Resources are available. I would suggest uh, having a comprehensive list of licensees and, and a map. Also, provide community friendly information and notifications, as well as uh, giving people more information about what is acceptable and what is unacceptable or illegal and illegal, so that they can be a partner with the city rather than being the sole uh, instigators of trying to figure out what's going on in their neighborhoods. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next caller is two victimized city retiree. Hello? Yes, good morning. Hello? Yes, good morning, we can hear you. Yes, good morning. Um, I'd like to um, say as far as that, uh, this uh, ordinance or whatever is concerned. Now, it has it has not been illegal to possess, if you're over 18 and you're an adult, a certain amount of marijuana uh, for years. And I don't know why people don't know that, you know, and I, I know why people don't know it, because people... You make money off people being locked up for it. I believe back since 2012. So this is a long time. We're on 10 years just to get some legislation proper <laughs> so that black people, majority black people, who've been, uh, you know, victimized by this law, uh, these types of laws, can benefit from it. I just don't understand that. I understand the type of logic, but we got to change that. You know, we got to stop trying to be so you know, uh, uh, cloudy when it comes to our funds. Th thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. The next caller is Cynthia Carter. Good morning. Um, I just need it on record. I'm a resident of the city of Detroit, and I am tired of getting notifications about marijuana usage places popping up. There needs to be a limit. I get black people have been, you know, marginalized in new industry, but this is the wrong industry to get black people. A drug that is going to kill our city even more, keep our young black men from working anymore. Y'all got to get better and find some other industries. This is ridiculous. I don't want a marijuana shop on every corner like we have a liquor store. You're not going to see it in West Bloomfield. You're not going to see it in Livonia. You're not going to see it in Westland. Why do we still have to live with this mess here in the city? Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next caller is Carol Hughes.
Uh, good, good morning, honorable body and panel. May I speak? Yes, you may. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning, Ms. Hughes. May I speak? Yes, you can. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, I want to land back on what the previous callers have suggested to you that is going on here. Uh, black people have been put in jail for years for marijuana p possession and have, have had lost jobs due to it. Now you want to make it our industry, but we don't, we're not in control of it. The unlimited license have already gone out to the big people, you know, so we, we're, we're only, you know, allowed to, you know, uh, this tier level kind of uh, engagement. But my, my, my issue is with a plan that, that, that violators of what you all call the, the good neighbor uh, policy. How do we, if we don't think that this particular business is a good neighbor, how do we get rid of them? And I mean, without all the bureaucracy and the rigmarole, people have a right to control what is in their neighborhood. If they had better control, we wouldn't have a liquor store on every corner. And we don't want to see marijuana dispensaries all over our neighborhoods near our children. Why don't we put it downtown? That is a good suggestion. Thank you, Ms. Hughes. The uh, next caller is phone number ending in 299. Yes, good morning. My name is Joyce Moore with the Virginia Park Community Coalition within the boundaries of the Virginia Park community. I don't understand how Gary Brown can come to this meeting, the Detroit City Council meeting, and say there won't be any public comment. We should have on August the 4th a Zoom meeting also at 6 p.m. Thank you. I, I just, I'm sorry I didn't use Moore, this Ms. time, Moore, but it's a good point. I'm Thank sorry you very to... much. I'll be at the regular general meeting also. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you, Ms. Goodbye. Moore. <laughs> Our next caller, please. Our uh, next caller is phone number ending in 337. Good morning. Good morning. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. Thank you. Um, my name is Pat Bosch. I live in District 3. Um, I'd like to second the comments made by Ruth um, Carter, excuse me, Cynthia Carter, and also Ruth Johnson. Um, in the interest of time, I agree with both comments. And uh, what I'm concerned about is the unlimited number of licenses that are being granted and the coining of the marijuana cannabis uh, as an industry. Um, it's not really an industry. It's a chance for uh, some people to prevail, uh, well, at the risk of others. And our neighborhood is inundated with drug activity already. Um, there are open sellings of drugs where cars drive up, and there are prearranged drug deals uh, occurring right on Van Dyke, south of the 8 Mile. Thank you. The, the next caller is you, Matter. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I think you should all consider Cindy Dara's idea of uh, the city taking control over this industry, and then you then you can limit it to Detroiters. And remember, it's not just black people that live in Detroit. So I don't know. There's like, I get it. I get it about wanting to have Detroiters have the business. But um, I don't know. Sometimes this race discussion can be a little disturbing. But um, also, um, part of the reason I think we have some of these problems is due to the mass incarceration that has happened in this country that has broke families up, that has forced people into the black market. But for all of the people who uh, don't like marijuana, it's been historically used as a medicine for a very, very, very long time. It's too bad things got out of control with the drug war. All right, thank you, Ms. Warwick. The next caller is Michelle Watkins. Good morning, Ms. Watkins. All 
All right, Ari, if we can go to our next caller and come back to Ms. Watkins, please. The next caller is William M. Davis. Good morning, can I be heard? Yes, you may. Okay, I'd like to start off by saying that I am personally opposed to the expansion of, rec you know, of recreational marijuana, but I think if we're going to have it, it should be severely limited to no more than four or five um, of them per city council district. And we, we need to make sure that the demographics of the ownership is like the demographics of the city of Detroit. And we need to make sure that black people in the city of Detroit get a fair economic opportunity because black people have not been getting that in this city, especially the past nine years. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, next caller, next, please. And uh, uh, public comment is now cut off for this particular public hearing as well. All right, our okay. next caller, Ari. The next caller is Renard Manchensky. Hi, good morning. I'm speaking as a resident um, of the city of Detroit. I'm a District 6 resident. Um, I think what needs to happen is that um, the city needs to explain to the folks what are the revenue benefits of this uh, recreational cannabis uh, law. Um, I do agree with the sentiments of residents that we need to look into zoning regulation and also neighborhood regulation so they're not all over the place like liquor stores. But I think um, if folks are bringing up the thing about liquor stores, let's actually start questioning their license and their permits, too, because there's too many of those. And um, the other thing is, too, I think let's get this right. Let's get this so that residents, majority black residents in the city of Detroit can own these shops, because I do agree. What would be um, the use of all this tax revenue coming from these shops if it's not owned by Detroiters and legacy Detroiters as well? It's just another extractive industry to get more money out of it. Um, I'm not going to go into the reefer madness about all of that. Cannabis has medicinal benefits, but we need to do better with equity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next caller is Virginia Park One. Virginia Park One, good morning. Ari, if we can come back to Virginia Park One. Uh, the next oh, caller is- Hello? Yes, we can hear you. I was wondering how many homes have been converted already into grow homes within the community? Are we keeping track of that? And how do we mon or mandate that there's only so many, if that's the case, that- um, can be in particular community per square footage of schools and churches. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia Park One. Uh, next caller is Ruben Crawley. Okay, good morning, Detroit. Uh, I'm gonna direct this to Gary Brown, director of the so, Water Department, Ms. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Brown. Ruben Crowley, right now we're in the middle of a public hearing regarding uh, medical marijuana, or excuse me, adult use uh, uh, establishments, marijuana establishments. Oh, your your okay. comments have then, to be about this particular public hearing. Oh, okay. Well, that's great, Dan. I can uh, adjust my comments to situate the circumstance. Uh, medical marijuana. I've been smoking weed since I was 12 years old. It has never... Uh, affected anything. Um, I hold the third highest score in the history of the state of Pennsylvania on the GED exam. I've done um, quite a, numerous things um, around the city of Detroit for the last four decades. What I see happening with this marijuana ordinance is that 750 feet makes a big difference. It affects about approximately 3,000 to 4,000 locations that could be available to black individuals in the city of Detroit to take advantage of this new ordinance and this new law. 
750 feet, it shouldn't even be a matter of feet concerning that. And every establishment that could be open and should be open to black people should be done. All right, thank you. Um, and the last caller who raised their hand before you cut off public comment is Michelle Watkins. Hello, I wanted to speak on the uh, Hudson site. We are um, in the middle of our um, 1020 public hearing. We will have general public comment after. So if you want to uh, hang tight, and we'll come back to our general public comment. All right, thank you so much. That will now close out um, our public hearing for our 1020, excuse me, our public comment for our 1020 public hearing. Uh, Pro Tem Tate, did you have anything additional? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the uh, law department or the uh, Creole would like to respond to any of the comments made by the public I will say that I know there was a some of them I mean as you heard uh, there's a multitude of opinions about this industry which it certainly is an industry um, and you heard that in the public comments today that's no different than when you go out into the public into the community in the neighborhoods you hear again a, a multitude of opinions there as well uh, some have said that our licensing and our zoning is too loose some have said that it's too restrictive. Uh, what we're attempting to do is exactly what member, many of the callers indicated today, uh, working to uh, strike that balance of equity, uh, but also understanding that there, is, uh, there are a number of laws that have uh, been presented before us and lawsuits and litigation and, and case law that has come before us that has prevented us from doing a lot of the more creative things, such as the uh, first ordinance that we had approved um, with the, by this body in November of 2020 uh, clearly shows our intent. Uh, we continue to get lawsuits and we're going to continue to fight those lawsuits. Uh, but we also have to keep in mind that we have to work within the parameters of the law um, and, and make sure that our desires are uh, within that, that wheelhouse, if you will. Uh, so I just wanted to, to put that out there. I understand, again, that some like the industry, some don't like the industry, some don't even want to be, call it an industry. Uh, you name it, there's a number of opinions out there. We're doing our best, and I open up the, the opportunity for anyone who has any issues with the way the ordinance is drafted to please give me a call. I've of, often said that. And some of these callers, I've made that uh, known on uh, in this venue, and they've yet to call me. Uh, but you can, by all means, reach out, 313-224-1027. Again, 313-224-1027. Uh, you can also send an email at councilmembertate at detroitmi.gov. Certainly heard from a number of folks, but didn't hear from uh, those who called in today, and the opportunity still remains. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Pro Tem Tate. All right, there's no additional um, comments, and we appreciate those who called in for our public comment for the public hearing. Uh, Corporation Council, did you want to add anything regarding the uh, legal opinion that came out? So I sent it, uh, Madam President, yesterday. Uh, I sent a, a legal opinion to our city clerk. I want to apologize publicly to her for not getting it out prior to the letter that she sent back to one of the uh, a person sponsoring an initiative that would have replaced the ordinance that this council passed. Uh, she had until yesterday to certify whether or not the correct number of signatures had been obtained. Unfortunately, the basis upon which she made her decision was our own Detroit City Charter. The state law that authorizes the creation of the industry that the President Pro Tem just discussed indicates, and I'll just read it, uh, it's only a couple of sentences. Individuals may petition to initiate an ordinance to provide for the number of marijuana establishments allowed within a municipality or to completely prohibit marijuana establishments within a municipality. And such ordinance shall be submitted to the electors of the municipality at the next regular election when a petition is signed by qualified electors in the municipality in a number greater than 
5% of the votes cast for governor by qualified electors in the municipality at the last gubernatorial election. Our charter, as you all know, requires 3%. The difference is huge in this particular circumstance. In this particular circumstance, even though we are a home rule city, there is an absolute direct contravening state law, and because of the comprehensive nature of the statute that was passed and the state's dominance in this particular area, the requirements for petitions either to prohibit or to establish uh, uh, a marijuana uh, presence in a municipality must meet the 5% threshold. Uh, we communicated that, Madam President, to the clerk yesterday. Um, she's going to, she's indicated that she's going to take that uh, opinion under advisement. Uh, President Pro Tem Tate wanted me to come and make sure that this body understood uh, where we were that the, there would not be uh, absent an order by a court right now, uh, an initiative uh, election that any of you ought to have to be uh, concerned about. Uh, I, would hesit I would hazard a guess that perhaps uh, the persons who circulated uh, this particular petition may disagree uh, with the Law Department's conclusion uh, and the litigation that uh, the President Pro Tem uh, uh, reference before will continue, but I expect at some point very soon all of the various legal questions uh, will be answered. In the meantime, uh, please know that the marijuana team uh, is going to continue going forward uh, and the work necessary uh, will continue to be done. Uh, and with that, Madam President, that's really all that I had this morning. Thank you, Corporation Counsel. Madam no, President. Pro Tim Tate. And just for the public who's watching, uh, Corporation Counsel was referring to the uh, Department of Elections. If you're looking at your agenda, there is a, a memo that was sent to us uh, in line item 21.1. So just for your reference to the public. Yeah, and, and on that too, to the public, for the public, can you speak to what the actual petition was for, what it um, seeks yes, to do? What it actually seeks to do? So what the petition would have done would have replaced the ordinance that this body adopted and would have allowed all of the holders of current medical marijuana licenses uh, to receive a license automatically, uh, to use their phrase, be grandfathered in. Uh, and then on top of that, then increase uh, uh, almost by 100% the number of licenses that this body had anticipated issuing. Uh, so it would have been quite uh, an expansion of the number of facilities. It would have grandfathered in the current holders of the medical marijuana licenses and given them, obviously, an opportunity uh, to proceed unimpeded uh, uh, in terms of establishing a, uh, a volume presence inside the city. Uh, clearly upending uh, the legislative will of this particular body. All right. Thank you, Corporation Counsel. Yes, pro tem. Yeah, Madam President, and the, the reason why the uh, it's important to ensure that we get everything right in terms of this process is because the uh, lawsuit uh, essentially will, in my opinion, and others as well, uh, not the lawsuit, excuse me, the, the ballot initiative, what it does is it literally uh, creates a situation where all the current uh, currently medical marijuana li currently medical marijuana licensed facilities uh, this, the provisioning centers uh, will be grandfathered in and provided a major head start uh, ahead of those Detroiters that many of us are trying to get into this industry Detroiters as well as um, uh, economic uh, or legacy um, uh, applicants so, I mean, it's imperative that we do everything right and do it by the book because everything that we're doing is being watched and judged. Um, and there's a potential lawsuit and no matter what move we make. And so we want to ensure that everyone is honest in this process. And we're not, as a city, uh, going to allow uh, fraudulent or I don't want to call it fraudulent. Maybe that's too strong. But we'll not allow for uh, practices that are afoul of the state law to uh, uh, 
take place, especially within this particular process. So if we don't get it right on the front end, we lose the opportunity to write it later on. So we have to make sure that we do it right up front. Uh, Corporation Council, if you can just walk through what are the options? Sir? So what's before us today? Um, right now, you, you've issued a opinion to the Department of Elections. Uh, Department of Elections submitted a report to us saying that the uh, signatures were certified. What happens next? How do we, how is this potential conflict resolved? I think fairly simply, President Pro Tem, as you all know, uh, this body has 60 days to consider whether or not the language contained in the petition with the inappropriately certified number of signatures uh, will be adopted by this body. This body does not have to make, doesn't have to take 60 days to make that decision. You can make that decision uh, sooner. Uh, you can transmit the uh, uh, unadopted question to the election commission, move this then, move this question out of this uh, particular forum. The election commission then would be the next step, President Pro Tem, and they would make a decision as to whether or not the question as presented could go on the ballot. Uh, in my judgment, based on the opinion that the law department has issued, uh, the answer to that question would be no. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Pro Tem Tate. Member Young. Thank you, and uh, I, I think that you know, you know, uh, Council President Pro Tem Tate should be applauded. But here's my issue, and you know, anybody could chime in if they want to. I think equity is a good thing, and we need to approach it. And I agree with the first um, Orange and Paul Legacy Detroiters, but we are where we are. The lawsuits filed. I thought that I thought the the decision was absolutely absurd, but it is what it is. But I just don't think you're going to achieve legacy or inclusion when you have limited the pool of licenses at such a small number. I, you know, I just think for you to say that you're trying to achieve equity with a small license number is like people who say, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to work out and eat right. It's like people who want to be a world class swimmer, but I don't want to get wet. I just don't think it's realistic and it's going to happen. Now, I'm not saying that we should grandfather everybody in. I do think that we need to be loyal to people who were loyal to us in this business and who stayed around with us. I think that's and treat businesses that are here. We give at least at least give them an opportunity. But I think we need to expand the pool to a point where the guy who has lost everything due to the war on drugs, that's had their children taken away from them, that's been locked up for a long period of time that's now getting out and now can't get a job because of their record, denied college education because of their record, for something that was never based on drugs but based on criminalizing those who use them in the first place. And our response to that in the blackest city in America, where black people have been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs, is we're going to have this limited number to somehow reach out to have equity, I just think that's not accurate. And so as, as much as I disagree with this ordinance, and I mean, disagree with the, um, the initiative, and I thought that, that was wrong, the referendum, excuse me, I thought that was wrong. And I do think that it's unfortunate that we have these lawsuits. This is going to continue to keep happening. And I think, and I would urge my colleagues at some point in time to be able to reach out and work something out with the industry, not because we're admitting that they're right and we're wrong, but I just think the longer we wait, the more we're missing the mark. And we're seeing black businesses that are being hurt disproportionately by what we're in now. I mean, Kimberly Scott has closed up shop. People are literally talking about, we're not gonna be around much longer. I, I just think that the clock is ticking and if we don't, and I understand people not want us in a neighborhood. That's why I said earlier, I think we need to start talking about going vertical and having these facilities in downtown communities. Because not only does it deal with them being downtown, which these businesses should be in. Because if I don't have children, but if I did, I would know I'd feel some type of way. My kids were playing and they saw the marijuana, you know, they saw, you know, you know, um, purple, you know, um, purple diesel shop across the street from them, I would feel some type of way. And so they should be downtown. And it also helps us deal with the issue of lack of businesses downtown and vacancy because of re the remote work world in which we live in now. And I understand that not all businesses can leave. We have to have a balance. But we have to do something now. I mean, the, pro the, marijuana, pr the marijuana 
is one of the few products in the state where the prices have actually dropped because there's such a glut in the market. And the longer we wait, the longer we do this, the worse this is going to get. And we're going to have to expand the licenses so much just to make up the difference for the jobs and the economic opportunity that we lost. And if we continue to keep doing this, pretty soon we're going to miss the mark. And if we do, we have no one to blame here but ourselves. We have to seize this opportunity. I'm not saying we can't do anything. We can't achieve equity. But at some point in time, if we're serious about equity, especially within people of color, particularly within the black community, you're going to have to have a longer conversation about baby bonds and reparations on the national level and closing a racial wealth gap. So we have to do what we can, but we have to do what we can within the margins and be realistic and understand that time is not on our side. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Member Young. Member uh, Pro Tem Tate. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. And now we'll move on so we can uh, proceed with the rest of the meeting. So I thank you uh, to you, Madam President, to Member Young to, for recognizing the work that I, I've told uh, over the years in this particular process. Um, and I want to make it clear in the communication with those who are suing. And you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of the law department, but I've been very aware of the communication and the actions that they've taken. And so I want to make it very clear that uh, the city, uh, i.e. through the law department, has definitely reached out. Uh, there's been a reach out, several reach outs, but we're not going to roll over. It's a difference. Um, we have continued to fight and make sure that we stand on the basis of the law. That is why uh, Corporation Council presented this legal opinion today, because it is within the constraints of the law. Uh, if we did not fight back using the law, we would not be doing our job. We would essentially, again, be rolling over. And that is not something that I want this city to do under this particular ordinance. Uh, I want to make it very clear. Everyone has an opportunity to uh, apply for a licensing. Uh, I get that the currently licensed medical marijuana facilities, many of them do not want to compete moving forward. Um, but they're going to have to. And it's a provision within our ordinance that allows for everyone to compete for licensing. Uh, we've also created a situation where if we want to expand moving forward, we have the ability to do that, though we may be starting right now at 100 dispensaries in the city of Detroit. There's always the ability, as we talk about, for uh, expansion. Same when it comes to zoning as well. Uh, we are in the process of helping to level the playing field. If we do nothing and we just sign off on an ordinance, uh, flip the switch, those same people that we continue to say that we're trying to help and support uh, will be harmed, in my opinion, and, and others, uh, they will be harmed the most. And uh, I, I just can't stand to allow that to happen. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and I'd like to call the question. Motion has been made to call the question. Are there any uh, objections? Hearing none, that motion is approved. Uh, is there, so the debate will now end. Um, is there a motion to send uh, this particular line item to New business? I got a script. You have a script? Yeah. Okay. We have to send it to new business first for a vote. Is there a motion? So moved. Hearing no objections, we will move this to new business for a vote and now close out our 1020 public hearing. All right. Thank you, Corporation Council. Um, Mr. Clark, we can go straight to this line item. Sure, Madam President. Uh, Council President Pro Tem Tate. Uh, uh, Motion noting a roll call. President Pro Tem Tate. Madam President, I move to take from the table an ordinance to amend Chapter 20 of the 2019 Detroit City Code Health by amending Article 6, uh, Medical Marijuana uh, Facilities and Adult Use Marijuana Establishments, Division 3, Licensing, Section 20-6-39, Inspections, Investigations, Review of Materials Submitted, Section 20-6-40, Operating Requirements, and Section 20-66-41, License Insurance. Laid on the table July 12, 2022. Hearing no objections, that action will be taken. President Pro Tem Tate. I move that the ordinance be placed on order of third reading and considered read. <coughs> Hearing no objections, that action will be taken. Pro Tem Tate. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, I move that the ordinance be, play, be passed as submitted. There being a roll call required, will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Santiago Romero? Yes. Council President Pro Tem Tate? Yes. Council Member Waters? 
Yes. Councilmember Whitfield Calloway. Yes. Councilmember Young. Yes. Council President Sheffield. Yes. Councilmember Benson. Yes. Councilmember Durhall. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. The ordinance is approved. Pro tem tape. Madam President, I move that the title of the ordinance be confirmed. Hearing no objections, that action will be taken. Thank you. Thank you, Pro tem tape.